Smith University is moving into a new chapter. President Clarence Armbruster is retiring at the end of the semester. Took on the role in 2018, and shortly after he took office, I sat down with him. The school at the time was facing financial trouble. Take a listen. A few years ago, there were questions about deficits and whether there was enough money to, you know, keep doing what you're doing here. Where do you think you stand right now? Johnson C. Smith finished last year with a clean audit. Uh, we finished with a small surplus, and we're looking to try to reinvest some of those small earnings back into the university. Yeah, better days today. And since then, he has led the university through the pandemic to reach new heights. Under his leadership, the university's public profile has risen. He also secured more than $80 million to help with a plan to elevate the university's resources, recruitment, retention, and rigor. I sat down again with President Arm Brister after he made his retirement announcement, and I asked if he felt like he's accomplished everything he set out to do as JCSU's president. Oh no, the mission is clearly not accomplished. Uh, we're, we're, you know, this is a this is a path, uh, and part of that path. But one of the things that we did accomplish is getting the strategic plan done. And the thing that, and one of the reasons that I feel comfortable being able to exit right now is that we have a plan, we have a playbook, if you will, and uh, the board is committed to that playbook. Highlight some of that plan for folks who maybe aren't familiar with it, and, and where you stand right now, and some of the objectives you set out. Well, the the, the golden blueprint is really really rest on four pillars, uh, and those four pillars really revolve around academic excellence, and that academic excellence is going to be reflected in the enhancement of several programs here at the university. Mm -hmm. So one of those areas that we're really going to uh, upgrade is our business program, mm -hmm. uh, you know, business finance. Uh, we're in the second largest financial center in the country. Uh, business retail, we got a significant uh, gift uh, in that area from Lowe's, and we're going to create a business retail program as well. Talk about these partnerships that you've been able to forge, you know, over the past uh, a few years. And that's something that was really important and something that I was really focused on. But out of that, we've been able to engage with members of the business community and show that our graduates are really uh, can be quite uh, successful in their areas. So, for example, this year we had a um, uh, we had a career fair out of which 13 of our students were hired by Bank of America. I think six of whom will be going there post graduation. Other the other seven would be at internships. Yeah, that's awesome to hear. I, as a president, I mean, that must just be like, you know, music to your ear, right, when you hear something like that. And it gets back to what we had, the original conversation when we were here about uh, upward mobility, right, and the issues that we're facing the community. Um, this is obviously a major step, you know, in tackling that issue. How, how far along do you think are we in that process of trying to defeat that once and for all? Well, I think we're further along than many other cities, and I give credit to this entire community. This community, unlike any community of which I've been a part, has really rallied around the idea of making sure that those with the least can move up and get more. Uh, and that goes from the leadership from the mayor, Mayor Lyles, in terms of her leadership for the Mayor's Racial Equity Initiative, uh, the leadership of the corporate leaders, the CELC, the business community, the philanthropic community, uh, the Duke Endowment, who has been a great and long-term partner of the university for over a hundred years. Think about all of those folks coming together with a single purpose, which is helping the least of us move up. And so we're very far along. Uh, we know before you got here, the rankings, you know, Johnson and C. Smith uh, among uh, HBCUs was headed in the wrong direction. The last few years now, it's coming back up. How proud are you of that? Well, I'm certainly happy about the uh, the movement we've made to go back up. Uh, you know, John C. Smith has uh, historically been a very very, very uh, well thought of university, uh, and maybe for whatever reasons the rankings had gone down, but they have now gone back up. We've moved up to 26 among HBCUs, and our goal is to get in the top 10. Whoever sits in this desk next is probably going to want to pick up the phone from time to time and give you a ring. Are you ready to provide that good counsel when needed? I'm only a phone call away. The board has graciously asked me to make myself available uh, through the first six or eight months of the new president's tenure, so I plan to do that. But I'm also also caution because I've, I've seen this happen before a good ex-president is one who is never seen and rarely heard from so unless I'm asked I will not try to uh, make make sure that uh, not to interfere because you can only have one president at a time 
Um, when, they, when everyone looks back on your time here, what do you want them to take away from it? I'd like them to think that uh, I gave it my all, that uh, we put the university on a path uh, that, it, uh, that it will be on in a trajectory that shows no bounds in terms of ability to attract the kind of students that we want who can really, really be contributors to the uh, community and, and to the world. He has left an impact, no question. President Armbruster will officially end his tenure in June. He plans to spend some quality time with his family and play lots of golf. He's earned that right, absolutely. Appreciate his time. It is a first alert weather.